Have you been wanting to break into voiceovers, but you don't know how? Commercials, maybe some video games, maybe some animation, audiobooks, who knows? If you have been wanting to know what it's like to dabble into the world of voiceovers, you are going to want to stick around for this episode. I am Christine Horn, the creator here of Actors Daily Bread. What's up? And today you're going to get a special interview. I had a chance to interview Lanisa Renee Frederick, half of Hashtag Booked, the super popular online sketch show. And what a lot of people don't, don't know about Lanisa is that she, in addition to being an amazing actress on screen, she does a ton of voiceovers for some of your favorite video games. You've heard her voice on so many commercials that you don't even realize. And I reached out to her because she and I worked together once a long time ago. Uh, I coached her at one point and she has flourished and done so many amazing things. And she was gracious enough to share her expertise with all of us. So I hosted a live interview in my Hollywood Bound Actors Facebook group. If you're not a member, click the link in the bio below. If you're not subscribed to this channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, turn the notifications on so you never miss a video. So this is an, act an uh, extra special uh, replay of Actors Daily Bread because if this is something you want to know about, Lanisa is the one to help you. It's not my zone of genius, so I called in on someone who was killing it in the voiceover game. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next week. Enjoy, bye. Hey you, before you dive into this episode, don't forget your free gift. Click the link in the description below to grab your copy of my Get Booked Playbook. Learn how to face your fears, learn how to become a booking magnet, and learn the inner game of booking more work. Grab it now and enjoy the episode. Thank you for coming in the room. I am so excited for our special guest today. This is something that um, I've been wanting to do for a while, having some guest experts come in. And uh, so I'm excited to do this today. If you are new here, I know we have a lot of new members here in the Hollywood Bound Actors Facebook group. Welcome. I know a lot of you came just to see our guest. If you don't know me, I'm Christine Horn, known as the Booking Magnet. I'm a coach and an actress of over 20 plus years and the founder of this beautiful community. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Today, I have Lanisa Renee Frederick, half of Hashtag Book. You all know her. You should. If you don't, get into it. Click the link above or below. I'm going to bring her on the screen right now. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Hey! I'm so excited. I'm literally in the room. Look at that. You are, you are literally in the green room. <laughs> oh my gosh. Let me just let you see some of this love. It's so wow. weird. See how I was just calling out Facebook users? Right. I can see that. Hi. I you love it. being shady. It's I being know. Shady. I don't even know who's telling me what. So, um, when you put your comment, you might have to put your name and then put your comment. It didn't used to do that. It's quarantine. Who knows? Shady. I know. Let me just. Hi, Lanisa. Hey, girl. Hey. <laughs> Listen, Lanisa is an amazing actress. You, a lot of you know her from her wonderful sketch show, Hashtag Booked. What you probably don't know, Lanisa, you were my first private coaching client when I moved back to LA. What? up? And you moved here from Chicago. I did. And I needed someone. And I was like, I found one person and they were shady. I ain't go drop no names. You know, I was trying out folks. And then I was like, who this? And I looked you up. And I was like, this is it. Because I know I was like, look, I'm trained. I didn't get two degrees and certificates. I need some real guidance and business and how to get in here. And you know, actually this week is my third year anniversary of being in LA. Yes. So I made it, I made yes. it. Here. You used to say, y'all during our coaching, I don't know if you remember saying this, there was one coaching session, you, you were just frustrated and you were like, LA is like the Olympics of acting. Do you remember? <laughs> I don't remember that. You were just like, what? Uh, what am I supposed? To, this is. <laughs> you like, I have ten. You like, I have ten jobs. You do. I'm not. Yeah. Going to <laughs> I'm 
Like, this is too much. This is too much. What did I get into? So, it, so it is like whenever I see you online or see you on my television, I mean, it is like my heart just swells up with pride and joy and excitement. Um, for people who don't who don't know you, who's not who's not as familiar with you as as I am, can you give a brief? Um, just tell us a little about yourself, your history, and then how you got into voiceover specifically. Yeah, I'm so excited. This is like my favorite thing to talk. I love acting, but this is my favorite thing to talk about secretly. I love so it. I um, came here from Chicago about three years ago. Chicago is where I say I was born in Cincinnati, but I got grown in Chicago. Okay. Uh, I moved there to get my degree, studied acting, did all that stuff, did lots of free theater in Chicago. Did you know a lot of the big houses, Goodman, Steppenwolf, Looking Glass in Chicago? Really, just honed my skill of. So yeah, I did a lot of theater in Chicago, and my amazing agents there in Chicago. Um, literally one day, I was leaving the office for my theatrical agents. Like, okay, guys, thanks, blah blah blah, having my you know checkup meeting, and the yeah. voiceover agent she peeked her head out. She was like, hey. What you doing? I was like, uh, leaving. She's like, can you uh go in that booth in there and say them words? I was like, I don't know. Like literally, that's how it happened. And I, it was for like a McDonald's spot, and I booked it. And she's like, great, you now have a voiceover agent yes. like, within the know. same within the same agency. Right. So that actually throws into my first piece of advice: if you already got a theatrical, do they have uh, a voiceover department? Because that's an easy way in. That's an easy route mm -hmm. in. If you're a commercial agent, do they already have a voiceover department that you can just slide on in? Because uh, that's how I slid on in. So my amazing agents there in Chicago, Grossman and Jack, I'm still with them for voiceover there. And okay. they're great. When I moved here and had that conversation like, hey, I'm going to move to L.A., I was all nervous and scared. And they were like, bet we will give you a referral to William Morris. And I was like... Oh, cool, 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 cool. Met with William Morris and they were like, cool, come on board. We love Chicago. And I was like, all right. So I'm very lucky and blessed that I am represented in a couple of markets in Chicago and in LA uh, for voiceover. And that's how basically I got my start and started doing the thing and learning as I went along. I, I, and that is the key, learning as you go along. Um, you know, Thank you to all of you uh, HBA members. We had a thread. I put a thread in the our group last week with anticipating your arrival today. So we have so many questions. So here's how it's going to work for you guys who are watching. Um, I'm going to honor the questions that kept being repeated in our thread first. And we've already prepared to do that for about 20-ish minutes. And then I will open up if, you, if there's some follow-up questions in the chat. All right, let's dive into the first question. And then just a warning, I will give you the full screen while I set this up. Okay. Can you start from the basic, bare bones? We have, we have uh, actors mostly in here who do film and TV, right? So let's start with this equipment. I think that's the biggest thing that trips okay. people up because it's intimidating. People, Y'all, oh my God, when you guys... <laughs> On hashtag did was Danielle <laughs> in the closet with the, the pillow on her head. Can Love you talk it. about this world of recording at home, especially for those of us who live in big cities or in apartments? Can you talk to some of the basic things we might need to start? Absolutely. So look, it is it is not as complicated as people try to make it. I feel like the most important thing. The number one question uh, my students when I coach ask me is, what kind of mic should I get? What's the best inexpensive mic? What, what's the best mic I can get? What you need to not worry about is the, is the mic. What you need to worry about is the treatment of your space. So worry about blocking out all the sound. So do what you got to do. Blankets, sound foam. Um, I have a lot of blankets. Moving blankets are amazing. Find something like that to just cover you. Most of the time, my booth right now is a closet that is cleared out and I've just converted it into a booth. So the biggest thing is not the mic necessarily. I was booking off of my just straight iPhone for a while. And granted too, this was a different time pre Rona where you could actually audition like that and then go into the studio to book it or to record it. But the biggest thing is to actually 
treat your space. That's what we call it, treating your space to make sure that not only that sound is gone, but making sure that you don't sound echoey. So, cause here's the thing, you could be in a quiet space, but if it's cavernous, cavernous, I think that's the word, uh, <laughs> then that's gonna cause an echo. So uh, one of my first booths when I moved here, cause I didn't have my own place and things were crazy, was in the closet with all my clothes. And it was the best place ever because all those clothes actually cushioned the sound. So yeah, use more, think more about your space versus I need a mic or I need to get this right thing right away. Right, because you could have a fierce mic. Like I have a Blue Yeti in my office, but when I record things in my office, it has all that sound. sound. Right, right. Exactly. You, I hear my neighbor coughing, smoking weed. I'd be like, right. sir, I'm working. They don't care. <laughs> they don't care. <laughs> I do not hear. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay, guys. I got it. I'm on so I'm on my phone so I can see y'all's names. Okay. I feel so disconnected when I don't can I when I can't shout y'all out. Oh, oh but don't worry. I see you. I see you. I see you. Thank you for that. So that is a huge tip. So the space. So this is where it might y'all might need to scope out your house yep. and see where you can make this this happen. Um great. That was a big question. And let me say this. I know we, as much, we're gonna do the best we can within this hour, but all of Lanisa's links are above or below based on where you're watching. And this is what she does. If you really are serious about this or really wanna give it a good try, hit her up. She, <laughs> is, I'm not like, can I pick your brain? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can pick up this invoice. What you, um, <laughs> this is what you taught me, Christine. Let me tell you, this is what you taught me. I, I feel like that's what you put the fear of when we first met and did coaching. She's like, all right, so what's your skill? What are you doing? And I'm like, I can act. No, what else? I really do feel like you put that in me when I first moved here. So thank you. Because my whole thing was don't. And that's why I was just uh, the waiting. Waiting sucks. Waiting is not a plan. Right. Waiting to be discovered is not a plan and hope is not a plan. Exactly. And you have proven that. You have certainly proven that. Um, oh my God, these comments are blowing up. Yes, pick up the invoice, y'all. I said it. Yes. I said what I said. <laughs> um, okay, next, next question. I promise we're gonna get to other questions. Oh, this is what I wanted to ask you. What are some of the biggest misconceptions mm -hmm. about but somebody told me I got a good voice. I should do. I should do a. I would over. say that that it's easy. <laughs> like, seriously, because I have all sorts of students coming to me, and my first question is, "Have you ever taken an acting class? Mm. Do you know how to act? I don't <laughs> care if your voice sounds sexy. It ain't gonna sound sexy in a booth if you ain't got no objective or state. Yes, <laughs> or playing any tactics." So my number, the biggest misconception is of a good voice equals you can do voiceover. Uh, it's still a skill. It's like acting. What are you fighting for? What are you, who are you, who are you talking to? <laughs> What's at stake? So really just fine tuning and understanding like also what your voice is. When people come to me and they're like, yeah, I'm about to go to this place and pay $800 for a reel. I'm like, you don't know your voice yet. Why would you do that? Pause. Pause. This is for you guys. Uh, I think it was might have been Tracy. There were some people who were asking about reels. Listen up now. Continue, please. Yes. So a lot of people are like, "Oh, I'm about to get this reel," and reels are expensive. Reels can be expensive, and they're like, "Yeah, I'm just about to. I'm just going to do this, and then I'll do voiceover work and be famous." And I'm like, "Do you realize that, like, Lena Waithe, Queen Latifah, like all these people?" are also doing voiceover. I lost mm -hmm. that on AT&T to Lena Waithe. Yep. And then they called me and was like, can you be her voice double? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> There's a voice double? My mind just yeah. blind. I never heard of that. To wow. be Lena Waithe, I was on hold to be Lena Waithe's voice double for all the AT&T commercials. Double. So, what, so, so, so she don't get so dried out? So they right. can just Cause see her so Because she's so busy and booked, they were like, they'll swap people in. So everyone you hear and when you're like, that's a celebrity, yeah, but then there's always a match if it's a huge enough celebrity. Mm. I know I just jumped, but. No, it's great, this is so juicy. I know nothing of this world. So I'm like, 
Tell me about this white what stuff. Is what is this? Uh, wait, did that uh, answer the question? Well, okay. yes, misconception. We because that is one misconception. <laughs> we went into went deeper. Um, was is there another misconception? You know what? For me, the I've I've slipped up into a couple of voiceovers over my entire career, maybe three, yeah. right? Because of a special skill or an accent I could do or a voice I can match. I think mm -hmm. as a singer, it's really easy to match a, a pitch and yeah. a tone if I have to double something. Um, but can you talk a bit about the challenge? Because as an actor, we have the camera. Like That's what I'm always teaching. We have the camera to show our emotions, what we're thinking. But when it's just you and this mic, they those facial expressions, it's, we have to hear it. So how, what's oh, the one you do the same thing? You do the exact, the camera is, or the mic is your camera. Mm. The mic becomes your camera. And I'd be in that mic like, hey, what's up? Like you have to <laughs> really connect, build that relationship with it. Exactly. Like my mic is my baby. I mean, I'll check it. How you doing today, Mike? All right, you still good? Because it really, it, it's the same thing as the camera. And my, emotions and one day when I'm rich and famous and like Cree Summer, I'll have a huge bit of uh, voiceover booth where I can spread out. Cause when yeah. I get in the studio, I'm like, I'll jump, I'll use my hands, I'll use my face. Like it's all part of it. And yeah. I get people to use their, a lot of times, this is another thing too. I don't know how people sit and do voiceovers. I'm like, how are yeah. you sitting? Yeah, even like singing. Cause all that yeah. breath that's needed. Breath that's needed, and also the emotion. If I'm getting emotional about something, how am I sitting? So really using your whole full body in order to convey, whether it be a commercial, a video game, online learning, whatever it is, you have to use your whole body. Since you just mentioned a little video game, you know, uh, <laughs> you, did a couple, you, couple, you, did a, you did a couple little, little video games. Uh -oh. Can you please, for, for people just joining, if you're just joining, this I'm Christine Horn. This is Lisa Renee Frederick, half of Hashtag Booked, voiceover extraordinaire, right? Hello. Can you, for real, can you give us a, a, just a little rundown of your credits of, for the work that you've done? Yes. So because coming from Chicago, where the market is majority commercial, most that's where I got my start. So starting doing craft, doing Ocean Spray, doing AT&T, doing Teach for America. Uh, I think I'm still the voice for teacher. I need to check on that. I think I'm still <laughs> <laughs> uh, doing make I've done tons and tons of McDonald's because think about you have to think about the market and then moving out here I always tell people look starting commercials that's usually if you're looking for an agent that's sometimes where they're gonna pick you up there are exceptions to the rule but and then getting out here like Reynolds rap and lots of Cox communication Comcast and then I was getting tons and tons of animation and video games. And I was like, something's not hitting, it's not sticking. And I just learned that it's a numbers game and mm -hmm. they keep calling you. And the casting folks are like, no, you're good. You're fine. Let's go, one, let's go calm, just like acting. You're like, okay, yeah. I'm good, I'm in a good space. Um, and then eventually mm -hmm. last year, what is this, 2020? So last year, I booked Call of Duty. Yeah. It was so amazing. And I was one of the first Black women to be a major playable uh, character in Call of Duty. My character is Sid. So it makes me so happy when my friends are like, I'm playing you right now. <laughs> I was with my brother-in-law over the, over the Christmas holiday. And I was like, uh, my friend, uh, she's a boyfriend. <laughs> I just, wanted, I just wanted you guys to know, like, this is legit stuff you're getting. Like, for real. Take some notes. Um, okay. <laughs> Let me get into it. We talked about that. I'm come, We're going to come to this thread. I promise. Y'all blowing up. But I just want to honor the, the question. question. What'd you say? I see the questions here. I see it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just a few. Just a few hundred <laughs> questions. Oh, this was a And this is a kind of, kind of, this was for Andante. Andante, if you're watching, you know, when you get a voiceover script, and it's not just your lines. There's there's lines for someone else. I saw this. Mm -hmm. Do you what what do you do for that? You never do someone else's lines. You literally do your lines, take a beat, do your line, take a beat. Do not don't do the whole script. Just do your lines. Don't call nobody over to, to no the part. No, 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 no. They just <laughs> listen, your we don't say it out loud. 
Right. I mean, I have no assumptions. Yes. But you know something I do do I do do as well for scripts that are juicy like that, where there are two characters, I will read the whole script and then edit and delete out the other character because I need something to react to. And I yeah. need to hear how it sounds so I can like, oh, I went to the store. You went to the store. So I need to be able to react, but I can easily delete it then. I love it. That's a great, that's a great tip. Andante, I hope you found that helpful. For the reels, this was something a couple of people asked because these are different mediums, doing audiobooks versus video games, right. doing uh, commercials. Should those be separate reels or can you mix them together? Separate reels. You should always just have like separate reels. Just like for acting. Exactly. Okay. Always be separate. Just, just like for media. on camera is what I meant right, to say. Exactly. Different media. Last uh, question that came in ahead and then I'm gonna come to the comments. Um, do you need a voiceover agent? You know how we can go to Actors Access and submit for on-camera stuff. Is there a place? Can I be doing this on my own in some way? Okay. Okay. So this is a very tricky question. One, it depends on your status. Similar to acting. Are you union? Are you non-union? Mm. Um, because, you know, if you're non-union as well, you're able to find, there might be some things that are available. Um I can't think of the site right now, Voice, VoiceOver Hub. This is like where my, it's like the actor's access of VoiceOvers. VoiceOver. Okay. So like I see my agent stuff, like, okay, my agent's profile is there. It's very similar. Um, it's So it's a very tricky thing because people want to underrate and under, I'm about to get real with you. I'm about to get real. Uh, uh, have you met me? Have you? <laughs> <laughs> That's all we do here. Lost to get real. Like people want to underpay us. Similar to like if you see an acting notice and you're like, wait, what are you paying? How? Why? So, I have seen voiceover auditions for huge corporations, and they'll be like, great, five hundred dollars for these three lines, which sounds amazing or whatever. But it's like, oh, you're underpaying me because you're losing out on what like bag benefits are. You're losing out on what that kind of, you know, what that brings with it. So a lot of people, I've seen a lot of people go into voiceovers that are, that have like a traditional um, voiceover voice and they stay non-union and yeah, they can make some bank. They can make some decent bank, but they're underrating what is actually available. Um, so that's a little tricky because there are people that will, they'll do that. Uh, but in terms of being a union actor, I would say the biggest thing, like depending on what it is, animation and video games, unless you have a connect, you're not going to get those bigger auditions unless you have a voiceover agent. Commercials, you might find some. Sometimes I'll see them. What's the other one? Not Actors Access. Not casting, LA. Casting, um, casting, casting networks? Network or Casting Frontier. Casting, oh, casting front, we have Casting Frontier. We have LA Casting. Right. So sometimes in those, I'll see voiceover auditions. Okay. So yeah, that's a possibility there as well. But it's it's tricky. I don't underpay yourself. Know your worth. Know your voiceover yeah. worth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And maybe it could be this thing, and this is just me thinking out loud, where if you have no, like as when we're doing on camera work, I have no footage, I have no real experience. Maybe I'll do this, and I know I won't make as much money, but at least I can see what it actually is. Right. What it's like. And maybe build, have something to use. Um, oh, my last question for the real. Um, if you have experience, can you use actual things that you've done on the real, or should you just be getting stuff that you pre, you know? No, you whatever you got yeah. sounds quality. Whatever yeah. quality. 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 <laughs> very important. I have a what I think my real right now has an a commercial, a TV commercial that we strip the video and just use the sound. Mm. So one of the little clips in it is actually a TV commercial. Um, my biggest thing for the reel is just find material that fits your voice. Find different genres that fit your voice. I don't know if you see this question here and I'm gonna go back in order, but because you just said that fits your voice, someone says, I notice they always want you to use your natural voice, not a polished character. Can you speak to that when you see that in the breakdowns? Uh -huh. I'm just looking at, uh, uh, they want to use your natural voice, not a polished character. Um, so animations is a different beast. 
I'll break it up in two parts. So commercials, you can, it still depends on who you're speaking with. So think about who's your target audience. Is your target target audience young urban moms? Mm -hmm. Whatever that means. Then your voice is gonna go in a certain way. When I was in Chicago, I did a lot of like radio ads for the like urban radio station. So I knew what they were looking for. I was like, okay. But then sometimes I'll do a general, I did um like a Tropicana ad. And I was like, all right, I know my audience for that. So it's still all natural and it's still all me and it's not a character. So you, you, cause you still have to figure, uh, realize that you're talking to a specific person. So that's commercial. Animation has gone in a different way. Pay attention to animation cause that's what's making the bank now cause nobody can shoot right now. Um, it's very natural. Bojack Horseman, very natural. Bob's Burgers, very natural. Um, Big Mouth, there are some surreal things, but pretty natural. So they don't want like that Looney Tunes, um, Mickey Mouse old school. It's pretty natural right now, I would say. I hope that was helpful. Yes, that sounds very helpful. I'm gonna come to these questions. Guys, thank you for being here. If this is your first time in Hollywood Bound Actors, welcome. This is what we do. <laughs> Good stuff. Um, and again, Lanisa's links are above or below. If you, this is juicy, I know it is. And we are we're gonna go for another 30 minutes and I'm trying to get to all these questions. Connect with her and follow her on Instagram. Follow, support her on both her Instagram pages. Shout out to Danielle in the chat, in the chat as well. Hey girl, have another half of hashtag booked. Hey girl. We're so proud of you all. Uh, featured in Forbes. I mean, come on. I'm just. That make me throw my brush. Um, <laughs> um, okay, Kim, Niam, Nimi, Davidson, and Emel. I think I answered. Uh, Lanisa answered your question about where to find some bo auditions. So I'm gonna keep moving. Um, What's up, Lazarus? Lazarus asks, "Is there a way to tell?" I'm gonna expound on your on your question, Lazarus, for everybody. Lanisa, is there a way to tell how good a voiceover agent is? You know, you know, for on camera, we can check their clients and see, you know, who's on what show. Like, how do you research a good? How do we know when it's a good bo agent? That's a that's a actually that's a really good question. I think I'm stumped. How do you know if it's a very good voiceover? I mean, are you getting out? Mm. Are you getting out? You know, like I sometimes have eight voiceover auditions a week, and that it means they're due within a three day period. That's that's good. You yeah. know, having that many back to back to back. So. Are you getting out? It's like, do they have those connections? And here's the tricky part, depending on where you, what your market is, Midwest, or if you're in LA, like I know for a fact that some casting directors here go directly just to their certain agents and they'll pick out like, hey, uh, WME, uh, CAA, uh, you know, ICM, like we need your, your top 20, send over blah, 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 blah. Same thing, you know, in Chicago, they might call the top, agents that they have relationships with. So I think the question is at uh, important question is asking like, Hey, do you feel like you have, you have good relationships with some of these casting directors? Right. At, at the end of the day, it is about, <clears throat> excuse me, those relationships, especially if there's just like with on camera work, if there's a tight turnaround, we don't have time to ex explore everybody right now. No. Right. Shout out to Melanie Renee. She says, uh, what do you think about submitting samples or teaching yourself how to produce your own reel when you're just starting out? Uh, I'm not sure about exactly to clarify what the submitting. It almost is. sounds like it almost sounds like just do it myself at home. So, okay, so for a reel, I if you are like, look, let me just get this together, let me tell you. Make your, oh, I'm about to, where the camera at? Make your own reel on the cheap cheap. Make your own reel. This is what you can do. This is what you can do. Hold on, Here. let me make you big. Let me make you big so they can really see you. <laughs> this is what you can do. If you're in LA uh, and you are SAG, the SAG office has an amazing resource for voiceover. And you can go in there and you can use a professional booth, record stuff, 
let their staff listen to it to make sure it's quality and they can direct you. You get those, put that together, make your own reel. Uh, if you are not in LA, see if your locals, if you're, if you have, if you are SAG, see if your local SAG office does have uh, a voiceover room. I know Chicago does. I know LA does. I'm not sure uh, who else does, but definitely you can. I would also too, if you can't afford a full $800, $900 reel right now, at least get you a coach. I've coached people that were like, I can't afford all that. I'm going to send some samples. Will you listen? Or will you, can I patch you in to when I'm doing my demo with myself so you can hear it? And I'm like, bet. That might be a good start for commercial. Um, just making sure that it's quiet though. <laughs> Remember back to the quality of your space, <laughs> making sure that that is very important. And then maybe a little later on, invest in the money, invest in the, the better demo. But yeah, I'm not like, use what you Use what you have, I'm especially guys, if you're dabbling. You know what I mean? Because you, you may not even know if this is really for you. Yeah. Right. And right. so test test it out. Shout, shout out to Marilee who's here in the chat who said she put something together and sent it to her agent and they she said she got two big auditions. She was like, exactly. All right, it could be quality yeah. enough. Um yeah. so, if they hear that my first demo was at my agency and she was like, Here, read these magazine articles. Great, now you have a demo. And I was like, Oh shit. <laughs> It wasn't carefully produced. She just needed something so people could hear my voice. And they were like, bet. Right. Um, shout out to Keena Ferguson in the chat. Happy birthday, girl. Happy birthday. Oh, oh, I thought you were going to show together. Hey, yes. Uh, shout out to Zeri uh, Rice who asked, do you clean up your takes as like edit out long pauses? People are saying yeah. that's a good question. I've been cleaning the hell out of my shit. Can I cuff? <laughs> Can I? Okay. Okay. Where you been? You've been busy. You've been you've been hashtag booked. You ain't been here. Yes. Like, it's yeah. after, it's yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Happy hour time. Yes. No. Absolutely. Uh, I always clean up my takes. Definitely. I I love uh, audacity. So if people are editing themselves, use that. I like that's my personal go to audacity, and you can clean it up. Gotcha. Oh, there was a good one here I saw earlier. Oh, shout out to Claudius. What's up, Claudius? Inner circle in the house. He asks, Claudius Bridgeforth, check him out. Great skits on Instagram. Do you send more than one copy of your auditions? And also, do you see a difference with natural adult anime? Well, that was two separate questions. First question, do you send more than one copy of your auditions? I always say similar to acting auditions, just read the directions. There are some that say one take. So just pay attention. If they don't say anything and it's a short enough copy, I might give them three. You know, okay. because literally sometimes auditions will be like, uh, pick up the pick up your shoe. And that's it. We're like <laughs> on the same on the same file or three on the separate same files. Same file on the same file. But before you do that, make sure you read because voiceover directions be look, on camera directions be crazy, voiceover directions be like. Right. Do this, do that. And you're like, okay. But yeah, if it doesn't tell me, then I'd be sneaking in like three takes. Awesome. And if you're going to do that, just like with on camera, if, make them on purpose. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, let us, that we should be able to hear why you took, they should not be the same. Do not do the same thing. <laughs> no point. I lowered my voice on this. I lowered my voice on this. One. <laughs> <laughs> That's not different. <laughs> That's the same thing. Yeah. Um, okay, I'll I'll give you one more Claude. Is do you see a difference with natural adult animation and more character kids animation? I have no idea what that means. Maybe uh, I mean I would say that like I said earlier, adult uh animation now actually a lot of animation in general is very natural. So it's not the caricatures that we are used to or what I'm used to based on age. Like it's more grounded. And I would say that across the board, if that answered that question. Awesome. Um, if you see something on the right hand side, Lanisa, you can pick. I'm scrolling on my phone because okay. we have like almost 200 comments. So yes. Uh, yes. Uh, let's see. So I see one about Source Connect. 
Uh, I do use Source Connect. And let me tell you though, uh, so for those that don't know, I'm not gonna explain this perfectly, so forgive me. Source Connect is an interface that allows the technician or engineer to like patch into your computer so they can so they can um so they can listen to the recording and keep it as well. So okay. what usually happens and how I've already this is why you always have to figure out what level and how much you want to do this. My level prior to quarantine was I will happily give you a beautiful audition from home. I will happily do that. But then you go have to send me to your studio to do the finished copy. Now that we're in times of Rona, I've had to make my studio where I also do the job. So I've had to get Source Connect so that the client can listen in and so that the client can make changes as we go along and the engineer can make changes. Well, let's pause right here. Pause for the cause. Yeah. I, because this has come up not in just voiceover, but even doing ADR. I shot a show yeah. in January and I had to do ADR from home recently. And they were not pleased, honey. They were like, uh, no, ma'am, we need to do this again. I was like, this is the fifth revision, yeah. right? However, like, is there a conversation ahead of time that's yeah. like an expectation that's expected? Yes. Or and this that's is your own personal level? No, and this is the difficulty in this time as well. I actually just did some ADR for uh, on-camera commercial. Luckily, because I have my voiceover background, I knew the questions to ask my commercial agent because they were like, cool, you're doing ADR. I was like, no, 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 no. Do, do they need to connect via Source Connect? Uh, do they need me to edit? Do they need blah, 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 blah. So they, I had those questions ready and I have my booth ready so I could just go in and do it. And they're like, all right, great. Send us a sample. Sounds fine. Okay. Um, so you, those are the questions that need to be asked up front. Do, are you supposed to be doing the editing? Are you just needing Source Connect or do you, can you use Skype? What do you need for me to connect to you? So asking those questions up front, uh, especially right now. Yeah, um, just sidebar business, Christine popping out. That would be an awesome lead magnet you could create with top 10 questions you need to ask before. Just saying, build your Absolutely. mailing list, help your coaching business. Just saying. Like if you can't no, tell, huh? I appreciate that. I need that. Yeah, we can, we can talk online. We can talk online. But because uh, that's, I had no idea. I mean, I did finally by the fifth revision, they were like, okay, we can make this work. We'll yeah. tweak it. But I was like, I don't know. This is not my zone of genius. I'm used to me driving to Paramount, and, you know, and doing and that's what's not, it's hard and not fair right now. And I think it's having that communication early. Like I sent in a sample early and I said, is my sound quality good for you? And they're like, yeah, sounds great. Let's jump on. So I love better. it. I love it. Um, I'm seeing a question mm -hmm. that looks like there's some some stank on it. <laughs> Everyone in Atlanta has this question about acting. Do you need to be in LA to get bigger VO roles? I I don't know Atlanta, so I don't know what's going on down there. And and the question about bigger. I mean, when I lived in Atlanta, again, I wasn't focused on voiceover, but like I did things for Publix and a few uh, right. like local chains. Um, but I'm not sure if Call of Duty is seeking, you know, because I think like with almost anything, and correct me, somebody feel free to come in the comments if I'm wrong, because it's not my lane. But I, I would imagine like on camera work, they don't always put offer series regular uh, uh, roles to the, right. to, the local, to the smaller markets. Right. They're yeah. going to the bigger agencies and the bigger markets. That's my guess, but I'm totally... Please use the I, I'm sure because Atlanta is a big enough hub to capture all the South in terms of voice. And when you think about it, when you hear commercials, you're going to want to hear something familiar. But I don't know, to be honest, I just don't know the market down there for voiceover enough to understand what they're looking for. Yes. Oh, there's so many comments, y'all. I love it. I'm so glad we are making this worth all um, of our work. I see ahead, one really think yeah. about Twisted Wave. Twisted Wave is fine, so that's another editing platform. I just prefer, Aud prefer Audacity because I think it's easier. But Twisted Wave is just as good. So use it too if you want. It's, an it's another tool. It's another tool. Um, Has voiceover work increased with sheltering in? Yes, it has. 
Yes, it, it has increased, but you got to be ready because if you don't usually have Source Connect ready, which is remember how they interface with your computer. Is that um, free or is it a paid service? It is a paid service. And bless them because all of a sudden shelter and happened and they just blew up like, oh my like God. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, no, like, 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 we're not ready. We're not ready. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> But they're so nice. They're so sweet. Uh, but do not get Source Connect if your space ain't ready, because it's gonna be pointless. Don't get Source Connect unless you have your booth soundproof and treated. Ooh, this is y'all. This is so much gold. This is so much gold. Please, you know, I'm gonna ask one thing of you when we get done here. Please go to Lanisa's Instagrams. Follow her on both Instagrams, please. Let's show her that love. And also, if you are like, this is really piquing my interest and I, I've been wanting to delve into it, please uh, click the link and learn about how, I mean, this is what she's doing in a free live. Can you imagine what it's like getting coached by her one-on-one? -on -one? I'm, I'm just saying. Um, there are no silly questions. Um, which auntie school administrator voice did you channel for that last skit you and Neil did? <laughs> <laughs> Was that the one where, are you sick? Was that that one? Is that what you're you talking sick? about? You sick? You sick? <laughs> all of them. With the tongs. And all of them. All of the auntie and administrators, all the audition monitors that are like, like, why are you so gruff, sis? Chill out. <laughs> All of my, I come from a postal worker family. So all my oh. postal worker family. <laughs> well, you know what? It's that, it's that energy. It's so, being from New York especially, it's gruff, but so loving. There's it's just so love. much love. Because you always end it with baby. Okay, baby. Love. <laughs> no baby. But it's love. Her Instagram handles are above or below. Everything is there. Everything is uh, posted above. Um, and if you get confused, you can at least start with hashtag booked. Follow them, and then her name will be there. Yes, it's like L dot A dot underscore. I know. Something. Danielle's like, will you stop making it so complicated? And I'm like, I was, like, I, was trying, I was trying to pay. I was like, L dot A. I know. I know. <laughs> you, Danielle, can you not make your <laughs> Lanisa? People gotta find you. <laughs> I know. Oh, gosh. Okay, I want to hear. I want to hear some of your takeaways in the comments. If you're picking up what we've been putting down, well, what she's been putting down, I ain't been putting nothing down, but listening. Um, <laughs> um, put, I want to hear some takeaways in the in the comments. Um, I definitely, for me, Source Connect, these are words I've never even heard of. Um, you know what, too, what I learned just from recording my audio book, if, you if you're new to me, I have a book out called Playing Small, The Actor's Guide to Becoming a Booking Magnet. And recording the audio book, it was challenging. Yeah. It was tiring. I'm not about that. I was, like, I was like, I'm yeah. so thirsty. I was yeah. like, That's a what special am I meditation. Shout out to Dawn uh, Bino, who's a beautiful vocal coach as well and singer. And the day before she texted me, she said, Christine, don't, don't forget to really hydrate and do this. Yep. Warm up. And I was like, this is, this is, so how, so have you delved into that world and how does it differ? Audiobook world where it's so much copy versus doing uh, animation or video games? Um, I don't, me personally, I don't like audio books. <laughs> I don't, it is not my ministry. <laughs> <laughs> we all ain't able. We, ain't, we all ain't able because it is a lot of time and energy. Now I imagine like doing your own work, there's the passion and love about it. But if you're doing a 600 page engineering book, really? And yeah. I feel like I feel like your setup has to be different, and you have to understand if you're getting paid by the hour or paid by the edited hour, and those are two very different things. And I know people that at the end of the day then got two dollars for Ooh, not, not edited hour. Yeah. So if you're editing too, they're not. They might not count that. So this is why. I, I <laughs> like, you know I just, it made me itch. I was like, I, I can't. Now I'll do a children's book because I'm like, cool, ten pages. <laughs> don't give me a six hundred page on accounting. It's not happening. I'm not doing it. 
Yeah. Oh, my God. What, what, um, we're getting ready to wrap guys. Um, but still give your love in the comments if you've been enjoying this and if you have a, any final questions before we go, um, and the replay will be available here. Uh, and I will, of course, you know, I'm the queen of repurpose. We'll put this on YouTube and we'll put it on the Hollywood Bound Actor podcast. If you're not subscribed to our podcast, you totally should. It's on wherever you listen to podcasts. So we'll have Lanisa everywhere on the interwebs. But, um, out of the characters that you've, that you've had to play, what's your favorite type of voice character to tap into? And how do you decide the pocket that character lives in or mm -hmm. where what you pull from? Like, what's your favorite way to approach that? I would say someone more grounded where I feel like my theater training really comes into play and I get to just tell a story with, Sid that I played in Call of Duty. I actually remember that audition very vividly. And I remember it being a monologue talking about her home. Mm -hmm. And she was in the military. And I pulled from that. My whole family, my uh, you know, my whole family is military. So I remember pulling from that and just being really honest and real and genuine about telling this woman's story. The audition piece that I had never showed up in the video game. Oh wow. <laughs> so they'll give you just, you know, dummy sides just to hear how, how you can tell a story. And I remember when I booked it, the lady was like, yeah, I mean, partially it was because when you told a story, it would it just sounded so real and grounded. And it's hard to, like, if you're doing commercials, cause you know, sometimes it's hard, like, what is this? I'm, but it's a, it's a product. It's the same mm -hmm. thing though. Yeah. You still have to be grounded. You just happen to be mentioning, I don't know, Listerine. So yeah. being grounded and, that's where you tap into it. And knowing who your audience is, really knowing who your audience is. One final question before we wrap. Um, you know how you just, we just talked about audiobooks and how that's like not your not your jam. Like um, like for me, I'm not sure if VBO is my jam. I ended up getting a callback for a, I guess it was, a, I think it was a video game some months ago or last year. And the callback was in person with people in the room yeah. and then people on Skype. And I started getting really annoyed. I was just like, they were like, say it this way with this much breath and jump in uh, as if you're yelling, but as if, but quiet, uh, a little more energy here. And I was just like, what, what, yeah. what? Just let me do my, just let me ask. <laughs> like, and I, I was like, Christine, I'm very aware of my energy. Like you're probably giving this energy back, but it was so specific. The sound design yeah. in the room, how, how can one prepare I know we're in post quarantine when we're back in rooms or even mm -hmm. doing a callback th from our home. How can you prepare that? How do you break that down for yourself? If you are also blessed, you will have a director in there that can guide you. Uh, the best directors understand that our voices are the first thing to clinch when we get anxious and when things happen, which is why a lot of times if you're in the booth, they'll put you on pause because they don't, they don't want you to hear your notes because our, our voices then clinch up like that. And if you wow. have a director, they so can guide you through that and give, they'll give you real life scenarios. Here's the real, real though. Sometimes you don't. And sometimes you have directors that are offensive and you're like, eh, one of my, uh, I think I'd been in the game for a little bit by then. I was playing a librarian, a librarian. And they said to me, great, that was lovely, but can you sound more like Cookie from Empire? And I wanted to like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I wanted to do. Um, I was glad, I, could, I, I don't think I was new at that time because I think I would have froze. So you have to take that deep breath. Mm. Just remember the purpose. You have to remember who you're speaking to and just stay grounded in that. And ask for clarification. Don't be afraid to ask for questions. Okay. Don't be afraid to take your time and breathe. You know, if they give you a direction, it didn't say do it right now. They just said, here's the direction. And I know me. I know what I do. I, I have to, you know, ruminate over it. Okay, got it. So don't be afraid to take your space and your time. Oh, you sound just like me when I'm talking about on camera auditions. I love the how it's how it's that same thing. Same thing. Yeah. Because same thing. It's your thing. 
Right. And you want to do a good job and they want you to do a good job. Right. So it's not serving anybody to, to try to rush through it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, Lisa, this has been amazing. What, what should tell us whatever we need to know? What's what's yeah. coming up? What's to expect? Is there something yeah. you want on Hulu or Netflix or what? Where can we watch you? What just tell us how we can love on you? Yes. Uh, so please do follow all of my all of the um, Instagrams and I do coach voiceover. My my passion and my expertise is really coaching beginner, especially people of color. Because when I first got in a room and we get it direction like be sassy or be like this it would freeze me and it would make me stop wanting to do my best so i coach people on like all right this is what this means and this is how to get through that so i love i love 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 coaching people on how to get started and how to really navigate this world because it's it's fun but it's tricky similar to yeah. acting uh so yes Follow me. Um, I think my site is on there, so you can yes. book a consult. I do every a consultation with everyone to make sure we're fit and find out what your needs are. Definitely follow hashtag booked. Yes. So that's with the lovely, also animation queen Danielle Pinnock. She's yes. animation. Queen. She blows. She gets. She gets it done. So we are uh, an Instagram series that follows. Uh, the joys and misfortunes of being an actor in the industry. So we do a lot of sketches talking about what we go through as actors. Uh, we're currently developing it into a television show, which is amazing. Woo! So happy to hear that. Yes. So exciting. Y'all so heard it please. here. Y'all heard yes. it here. So please get on hashtag book and follow. Uh, I do have like a commercial running around. I don't know where it's playing, to be honest. I saw a check, so I know where it's <laughs> Thank you more, please. Thank you. Thank you, residual. Thank yes. you, residual. Um, yeah, so that's that's what my life is right now. Coaching and doing hashtag books. So I would so appreciate the love. And thank yes. you. You were so influential when I moved here. Uh, I think I said this before we got on live that it's my three-year anniversary this week. Yes. So thank you for everything you've done and what you continue to do. Yes, I'm so proud of you. Thank you all for watching, um, listening, whatever, wherever you're tuning into. Um, you know, we have to support each other. There's amazing things going on. I know this quarantine time is so uncertain and you may have days where you got the energy, days you don't. Be right, kind right. to yourself, be gentle to yourself, you know, and just, just pace yourself. And nothing, there's nothing here that you have to do. But if you want to dip your foot in the water and you want to learn more, Lanisa is an amazing resource. So everybody have an amazing night. This replay will be here if you missed any part of it. And I'll see you. We'll see you guys soon. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys.